Hi, sixth graders. This is Mrs. Gall. Today's lesson is over factoring. Please grab your math notebook and open up to a fresh page and title this page factoring. When you're ready to go forward, press play. A few definitions that we want to go over before we start the actual process have to do with greatest common factor, which is sometimes known as GCF. I was trying to move my toolbar, but it didn't want to move. I'll just put it there. So write this definition down. A factor is a number that a number can be divided by. Usually we see two factors that we can multiply that go into a number. Our common math facts are example of factors. Here's some examples of factors of the number 24. One in four can be, or I'm sorry, one in 24 can be multiplied to get 24. 2 and 12 can be multiplied to get 24, 3 and 8 can be multiplied to get 24, and 4 and 6. These are all factors of the number 24. Please pause if you need more time to write down these two pieces. Another definition that we want to talk about today is greatest common factor, also known as the GCF. This is a special kind of factor because it's the largest number that two or more numbers can both be divided by. Pause if you need more time to write down that definition. Here's an example of the greatest common factor of two numbers, and this time we're going to look at 24 and 30. If we're looking at the greatest common factor of these two numbers, we first start by listing out the factors of each number. We already found the factors of 24 up above. We listed those there, so we relisted them here. These are all numbers that we can multiply to get to 24. Now let's think about the factors of 30. Well, I know 1 times 30 would get us to 30. 2 times 15 are both factors of 30. 5 and 6 are both factors of 30 and 10 and 3 are both factors of 30. So those are all numbers I would write down. Now greatest common factor means we're looking for the largest, the greatest factor that would both work for 24 and 30. So I know 1 is a common factor, I know 2, I know 3, but those are not the greatest options. The greatest option is the largest possible factor, which in this case looks like 6 is their greatest common factor we would say that the GCF for those two numbers is 6. Pause if you need more time writing on this slide. When you're ready, hit play. Let's practice finding the greatest common factor of some numbers. Let's try 9 and 15. Start by listing your factors of each number. For 9, what are some examples or what are some factors that we could say for 9? I'd say 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. We only need to list 3 once. Those are my 3 factors of 9. Now let's try 15. I know 1 and 15. What else would work for 15? 3 and 5. And that's it. Where's their greatest common factor? 1 is common, but it's not the largest possible factor. 3 looks like it's going to be our GCF for 9 and 15. So we'd write GCF and we would say 3. Let's try another example. 18 and 32. Why don't you start by finding the factors of 18? Maybe you said 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, let's, oops, let's try 32 now, 1 and 32, 2 and 16, uh, 3 wouldn't work, but 4 and 8 would. Running out of space here, but 5 wouldn't work, 6 wouldn't work, 7 wouldn't work, so I think I am good with these factors. Now, where is their greatest common factor that they share? 
it looks like 2 is my best option for 18 and 32 because although they have more factors, that's my greatest common factor. So 2 would be the GCF of 18 and 32. You try 20 and 36. Twenties factors would be 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5, 36 as factors would be 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, Ooh, I'm going to run out of room here, I might have to go down below, 4 and 9, 5 wouldn't work, 6 would work, 6 and 6, 7 wouldn't work, 8 wouldn't work, so there's my factor. So now we're going to look for that greatest common factor. Hmm. Thinking 4 is going to be our greatest common factor, I don't see anything larger than 4 that both of those numbers share. Now we're going to practice the skill that really links into this uh, standard, which is factoring out the GCF of an expression. So in order to do this, you have to be able to spot those GCFs. So that's why we just practiced that on that last slide. Please write down this example, 8C plus 36. First, we want to start by identifying the factors of each number part that we see. So my factors of 8 are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. Then we want to do the same thing for 36. Think about the factors. We have 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. Next, we want to look for the GCF, the greatest factor they both share, which for these numbers would be 4. That means we can divide both of these numbers by 4, and that's the largest factor we could divide them by. We're going to take that number out of the expression. And we're going to place parentheses into our expression, or around this new expression. So 4 is on the outside. That's the number we took out of our 8 and 36. Well, if you take that 4 out of 8 and 36, that means you're dividing those both by 4. So what's left over when we divide by 4? Well, 8c divided by 4 would leave us with 2c. And 36 divided by 4 would leave us with 9. So what's left in my parentheses is 2c plus 9. My 4 needs to stay on the outside of the parentheses because we still need this expression to have the same value as 8c plus 36. And as long as this 4 stays here, that means this value stays the same. It's kind of the opposite of distributive property. And actually, if you went and performed distributive property with your answer, you should end up back at this expression. 4 times 2c is 8c and 4 times positive 9 is positive 36. That's how we know we factored correctly. Let's look at another example. Please write this down, 6m minus 42. Reminder, we start by thinking of the factors of each number. What are the factors of 6? Hopefully you said 1 and 6 as well as 2 and 3. Now think through your factors of your second number, 42. 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14, and 6 and 7. What is my greatest factor I could take out of 6 and 42? Maybe you saw this. It was 6. That means I can divide both of those numbers by 6. That's my number that's going to go outside of my parentheses that I'm going to factor out. When I factor a 6 out, we have to ask ourselves, what are we left with? So 6 divided by 6 would leave us with 1m. 1m is the same thing as m. Negative 42 divided by 6 would leave us with negative 7. Notice the sign stayed the same. We still had a negative or that subtraction sign in between the two terms. We just did that division to um, show what that factoring would look like. You can have a 1 in front of your m. But 1m is the same thing as m, so either would be acceptable. Reminder, you can 
this is the opposite of distributive property, so you could actually do perform distributive property to see if you would end up back at 6m minus 42. So 6 times m would give us that 6m, and 6 times negative 7 would give us negative 42. That's a way to check your answer to make sure it makes sense. How is factoring an expression related to the distributive property? I've been talking about how they're kind of the inverse, the opposite of each other. Um, with factoring, we're thinking about what can we take out of those of that expression and place on the outside of those parentheses. And then if we were to perform the distributive property, we would end up back at that original expression. So they're sort of the inverse of one another. Let's practice factoring out the GCF of some expressions. Let's start with 10a plus 45. First, we need to think about the greatest factor we could take out of 10 and 45. What do you think that might be? I'd say 5 is our greatest factor. So that's the number that's going to go outside connected to the parentheses. Now we perform that division. 10a divided by 5 leaves us with 2a. 45 divided by 5 leaves us with positive 9. We can check our work by using distributive property to make sure we end up back at this expression. 5 times 2a is 10a. 5 times 9 is 45. 10a plus 45 was our original expression, so we know we're correct. Let's try another example. 8 k minus 88. What factor do you think is the greatest common factor we could take out of 8 and 88? Maybe you said 8. If so, that is correct. So we place our 8 on the outside of the parentheses and we do that division. 8k divided by 8 leaves us with 1k. That's the same thing as k. Negative 88 divided by 8 leaves us with negative 11. We can use distributive property to check to see if we were right. 8 times k is 8k. 8 times negative 11 is negative 88, which was our original expression. Twelve x plus 30. I want to show you an example of if I did this incorrectly. So I'm going to start by picking a factor that maybe isn't the greatest possible factor. So let's say I just thought, oh, I could divide these both by 2. And I took a 2 and placed that outside the parentheses. 12 divided by 2 would leave me with 6x. 30 divided by 2 would leave me with positive 15. The reason I did this is I want you to look at 6 and 15. And you might notice there's still another number I could divide those by, and that would be 3. So that tells me if I end up at this point and there's, these numbers can still get broken down further by another similar factor, that means I probably didn't pick the greatest common factor, so I'm going to go back and reevaluate. So let's go back to the original expression. Thinking through our factors that we can divide 12 and 30 by, I'm wondering if maybe 6 would be a better choice because 12 is divisible by 6 and 30 is divisible by 6. Let's try that. 12x divided by 6 leaves us with 2x and 30 divided by 6 leaves us with positive 5. Now when I look at my numbers 2 and 5, I know there's no further factor I can divide those by, so that is a better answer because that's my greatest factor I could take out of those two. Let's try 16y minus 48. Thinking about what's the greatest common factor I could divide those both by. Hmm. Let's try 8 to start out with and see if that would work. 16y divided by 8 would give us 2y. Negative 48 divided by 8 would give us negative 6. Ooh, that tells me I can probably grab a larger factor. What might that be? I'm wondering if we can take 48 divided by 16. I'm not thinking we could because 32, let's try it. Oh, look at this, 16 times three is 48. So that means we can go a little bit further. 
we can take a 16 out of both numbers by placing that outside the parentheses. 16 divided by 16y divided by 16 leaves us with 1y or y. And negative 48 divided by 16 would leave us with a negative 3. There's another example of sometimes when those factors, those multiples get really large, sometimes those factors we have to play around with a little bit of scratch work to make sure we found the greatest common factor. All right, you guys, last one. This one has three terms that we need to look at. I'm going to um, clear out some of my work here so you can see this one a little bit better. This one has three terms. So we're looking at 18, 12, and 6 for our numerical piece. Um, if I wanted to pull a common factor out of all of those, what's a number I could divide those all by? I could divide them all by 1 or 2, but there's actually a larger choice. I could also do 3. Could I divide them all by 6, though? Yes, I could. So that's going to be my greatest factor. 18 divided by 6 gives me 3, and my x squared stays in x squared. 12x divided by 6 leaves us with 2x. And negative 6 divided by positive 6 leaves us with a negative 1. So there's an example of three numbers we were pulling the greatest common factor out. Now, if we needed to, we could always list out our factors. If it's harder for us to think about that in our heads, list out your factors so you can find that common factor they share. That's all for today. Talk with your teacher if you have any additional questions.